Long time no see, Larson. I sent a letter. Some men grinned and nodded to Evelia. Yes, it's been a while. With a warm and sincere sentence, I miss you. Larson Maiden's 11-year-old life officially began. Dear Evelia, whom I respect very much, that's how some men started writing all the things he wanted to say to Evelia. When the two cousins went to a corner of the garden in Sade's house, Evelia looked a little pouty. She hoped it wasn't out of respect, but love. Some men was a bit taken aback by those words. I mean, Evelia smiled gently. Love is better. Some men felt a bit shy and confused. Ah, I understand. The look on her brother's face made Evelia unable to stop laughing. Ha ha, I was just joking. So you want Rudia to come with me? Some men also smiled when she saw that Evelia was much more open than before, yes. Some men began to explain, as you said in the letter, Rudia cannot grow at all here. Some men felt a bit helpless when she remembered the scene where Rudia fought over a banana with a monkey and burned down Sade's kitchen. Give it here, it's mine, I'll bake and roast it for you. Evelia thought for a moment and then asked, so, you want me to raise a child who doesn't even have maiden's blood? Sung Min immediately explained, No, she was bound to me by a special contract, so she was forced to obey me. Evelia tilted her head to look at her brother, so what, Sung Min smiled warmly and replied, And you obeyed me. Evelia's eyes lit up and her cheeks were slightly pink with happiness. You mean you will work under me? Sung Min happily replied, If she agreed to that. Evelia looked into the distance. Then, I have to ask you something. Some men hesitantly asked her, What's going on? Evelia frankly asked, Some men, what have you done during the past year? Her question made her brother startled. There was a flicker of wavering in some men's eyes. It was true that I hadn't developed any more as a magician. My mana and magic power is still almost the same as last year, but still. Some men quickly regained composure and stood up confidently focusing on her work. Changing your body helps you gradually adapt to being able to absorb mana more purely. Hearing that, Evelia is a bit confused. Transformed herself, Sung Min immediately showed her that her ability to control her power was better. The combat magic techniques and transcendent attributes put a huge strain on my body. Sung Min eloquently declared, I will gradually transform my body to adapt and be able to withstand that pressure. If you believe me and wait, Evelia suddenly interrupted her brother, Larson. Sung Min was startled thinking that Evelia was about to scold him. He stood up straight and serious. Ha, huh, I mean yes. Evelia stood facing Sung Min and made a serious face. Who do you think I am? Sung Min cautiously replied. The purest maiden bloodline and the best candidate for the position of head of the family. The one walking on the great path of magic, that's me. Evelia looked at some men with sad eyes. I'm a sister. I'm not talking about the fact that your mana hasn't increased since last year. There was a bit of bitterness in Evelia's voice. She just asked how you lived during the past year. That's all. Some men suddenly felt guilty. I see. I misunderstood her. Evelia yearned for affection like Cassin. I'm probably the first person in my family to send a letter to her. Some men immediately smiled and tried to appease her sister. Sister. Do you want to have dinner with me, like a family? Evelia responded to her brother's invitation with an affectionate smile. Family, that's a good word, is very warm. Sung Min grinned, I will also pick flowers from the garden to give to you later. The new flowers blooming this season are very beautiful. That night, Sung Min lay awake for a long time in bed with the bright moonlight shining through the window. Suddenly a voice echoed into his mind. I remember exactly what you were like a year ago. So prove to me that you've grown up, Evelia's voice echoed in Sung Min's room. He immediately sat up, proving that he was different from last year. Sung Min turned her eyes to the darkest corner of the room. Hira, Hira's voice rang out before she even appeared. Yes, young master. Sung Min immediately asked her, you heard the conversation, right? Hira gently nodded, yes. Then, without waiting for Sung Min to order, she proactively proposed. I will wake you up in the morning so we can leave before 6 o'clock. We are not sure how long the trip will be, so I will prepare the necessary food and water. Some men nodded and asked Hera, What test method do you think she will prepare for me? Hera thought for a moment and then replied, I imagine that would be something you haven't been able to do before. Some men smiled mischievously as if he had guessed something. Yes, he thought to himself. She certainly accepts this youngest Larson brother, 
but it remains to be seen how much Larson has changed. Early the next morning, some men came to see Evelia with a yawn. Did you sleep well? Evelia smiled and nodded, yes. You seem to be in a good mood. You know what you're going to do. Some men calmly replied, yes. After all, it's part of your test. Evelia glanced at her brother curiously. So you must have thought about a lot of things last night. Some men frankly admitted yes. I have to prove that I have become stronger, even though the amount of mana in my body has not increased, and the test must be completed in a few days, without affecting the Sade House's territory or work. So there's only one possibility left. Some men rubbed his chin and thought with a pensive look on his face. Evelia smiled slightly, tilting her head to look at her brother. So how do you think I will check on you? It didn't take long for some men to come up with an answer, since we can't use teleportation magic carelessly in Sade territory, so it must be demon hunting in Byron Rock. I just thought about that. Evelia smiled brightly and immediately opened the space gate. That's it. So, let's go. Song Min gently held her sister's hand. Yes, ma'am. When he was about to leave, he suddenly asked Evelia for permission. Oh, that's right. Can you take Hampton with you? Evelia was a little surprised, Hampton. However, after that, she still agreed to some men's request and brought Hampton along. As soon as the boy arrived, he knelt down because of dizziness. Hampton was trembling with a feeling of nausea. This was a bit too sudden, young master. He happily patted the boy. Ah, sorry Hampton. The current location they are in is Byron Stone Mountain, inside the Red Pine Forest. Some men quietly glanced around and observed the surroundings. True to its name, there are many red pine trees here. Sun Min remembers quite detailed descriptions of this red pine forest in the novel. It was a place where all kinds of monsters lived. It is one of the most dangerous places on the entire continent, to the point where the red pine has come to symbolize danger. Sun Min leads the group of people deep into the pine forest. You will just stand and watch, right? Evelia slowly walks last. Yes, as long as you don't die, even though this was expected. I'm still a little disappointed. She will not intervene even if her limbs are severed or her life is threatened. Suddenly Hampton ran forward and pointed to an old road sign. Young master, there is a sign over there. On the sign, it says, the area is inhabited by a unique tribe. Dangerous people do not come near. Following the direction of the sign, the group of three of them continued to go deeper. Hampton began to pant from fatigue. Young master, how far do we still have to go? Some men tried to encourage the boy. He was almost there. Come on, Hampton gasped and cried. You said the same thing an hour ago. Arrived at an open space. Some men looked around and saw no signs of love. He directed Hampton. It's just around here. Spread what I told you to prepare. Hampton rummaged through his bag. Yes, young master. Evelia silently observed some men's actions with a bit of suspicion. Wasn't it because she was afraid of poison that she brought Hampton along? Sun Min is still pointing five fingers, spread a little more. Evelia looked at the legs scattered on the ground and pondered that Larson alone could not win if he acted alone in groups. So I plan to defeat all the demons after she wins part of that group, but it seems that she had a more interesting plan than I thought. Evelia was surprised when she saw the confident smile on Sun Min's mouth. After a while, Sun Min told Hampton, Okay, that's enough. Hampton quickly put down the pork leg in his hand. Yes, young master. Suddenly some men asked Hampton, you can climb trees, right? Hampton was so confused that he stammered, well, um, maybe if I try, hard enough. Some men did not scold Hampton, but immediately carried the boy on his back and jumped quickly over the treetops. Never mind, just hold on tight to my back. While some men and Hampton had stabilized their positions on the tree, Evelia still calmly stood below and looked up at her younger brother. I'm a bit surprised. Evelia quietly observed some men and started using her stealth skill. Her movement was much lighter than last year. At this time, the demons began to smell the fragrant scent of pig's feet. Looking at the hordes of unique demons flocking to the land under my feet, I was secretly pleased, just as I predicted. A group of unique demons have gathered here. Evelia was completely invisible to the demons. They didn't know anything but happily rushed towards the pieces of meat falling from the sky. Evelia frowned slightly and transmitted the sound to some men. The magician would never use this method. Some men calmly replied, I know I don't want to work for you as a magician. 
He smiled slyly and added, I want to be someone more special than that. Under the tree, the goblins were enjoying the party deliciously, and the group of happy people were still quietly observing their activities. The goblins munched on the pig's feet, creating a crunching sound that echoed in the forest. Evilia, after observing for a while, nodded and seemed to enjoy some men's way of doing things. I see, now I understand. Evilia looked up at some men. So this was your plan, after you learned that goblins live in groups, right? Some men nodded confidently. Yes, he clearly understood the characteristics of these monsters. They lived in groups, but they were not friendly with other groups. So, some men's plan is to just bring out meat to lure them. Not only will a group of evil demons come, the other group will definitely be jealous and they will start fighting. Just as some men predicted, the two groups of demons were lured by the smell of meat and clashed with each other. They looked at each other with vicious and murderous eyes. The leader of the group screamed loudly to open the fight for food. Immediately after, it swung its axe and chopped off the head of another demon, causing blue blood to splatter. Some men looked at this scene and became excited, his eyes wide open. The battle had begun. He secretly smiled happily. Now I just need to stand and watch a good show. Below, the demons were not aware of the strange points of this war. They only fiercely rushed to attack each other in a sense of jealousy. Demons are a simple-minded species. They are ready to attack each other with everything they can to compete for even the smallest benefit. Very soon, each demon fell on both sides. The fierce battle caused blood to dye the entire red land green. Evilia calmly stood in the middle of the melee and counted each demon that was killed. In the end, it only took a few minutes for the demon's corpse to lie on the ground, leaving only one demon still alive. This monster was also significantly injured, but it still did not take its eyes off the pile of meat and grinned wickedly. The demon burst into laughter when the entire two herds were destroyed. It did not care that among them were its accomplices. Some men was still in the tree observing the monster. He knew that the time was ripe. When the arrogant demon was about to continue eating, a stream of energy came from behind it. The monster felt the energy from some men, so he immediately turned his head to look behind. In its eyes, there was only a bright streak of light that frightened it. Some men rushed down from the tree with a fist filled with mana. He aimed straight at the demon's head and brought it down powerfully. The punch carrying a terrible source of mana created an explosion that shattered two-thirds of the demon's body, turning it into flying pieces of ash. At this time, Hampton slowly slid down from the tree. The boy was still confused when he saw the demon's corpse scattered on the ground. Hampton tiptoed as he walked past the corpses of the demons as if he was afraid they would wake up. Wow, there are so many of them. Evilia counted them all but didn't answer Hampton. She just quietly appeared. A total of 24. What a surprise. Evilia's eyes suddenly became sharp when looking at some men. What would father think if he were here? Will he be angry or happy? Evelia stared at the light glowing object on some men's chest, a light that normal people could not see. Moreover, he was wearing a special item to protect his chest and something that weighed about 300 pounds. Some men smiled happily and said to Evelia, you must really want to see me use magic. Evelia tilted her head to look at her brother. Could be. Some men nodded and looked at the tree trunks along the way. If demons band together to form a group of more than 10 demons, they will elect a leader. I marked all the caves we passed on the way here. Some men smiled mischievously and declared to Evelia, I will show you my magic. Hearing that, Hampton once again trembled in fear. The boy looked around the lot in confusion, wondering how much more unique he was. Very soon, the group of them entered a cave full of miasma. Some men felt disgusted and covered his face. Ah. The smell was terrible. If the leader demon was once a warrior, then it would definitely show itself in the fight just now. However, if it were a magician, then that would be a different story. Some men walked deep into the cave without flinching. After looking around for a while, he finally saw the leader demon. As soon as he saw them, he panicked and dropped his magic staff to the ground. Some men stared at the trembling old-looking demon and guessed correctly. Some men was secretly pleased to have found the leader easily, truly a unique magician. It sensed Evilia's presence and became more scared than ever. As soon as he saw the one-man monster, Hampton screamed in terror, Is this, is this the leader? Some men secretly laughed in his heart. Hampton looked even more frightened than this demon. Some men looked around, 
Next to it were human bones, probably humans were their main food source. Right after that, some men stepped in front of the demon and gathered mana into his fist again. Well, whatever. Some men raised his fist and guarded the monster's head, saying goodbye in his heart, he indifferently said to himself. After all, it is the law of nature, survival of the fist. Coming out of the cave, some men proudly told Evelia, sister, this is the magic fighting technique I learned. Evelia nodded gently, I see, you tried a lot. Evelia looked up into the distance with a wistful expression. She could confidently approach that demon magician like that. Is it because you are here? Some men calmly nodded, yes, I believe you will protect me. Contrary to some men's expectations of a touching dialogue, Evelia coldly said, keeping that weak mindset and will is not good for you. Some men sadly responded to her sister's admonition. Ah, so, so what? The next second, a warm smile appeared on Evelia's cold face, but she really liked that answer. Some men suddenly felt shaken and didn't know what to say. Evelia didn't wait for her brother to respond, but continued. This time she was checking on her, so next time we meet, I'll bring you a gift. Having finished speaking, Evelia disappeared through the space portal and left some men in Hampton, standing in the middle of the dark pine forest. Seeing Evelia smile, some men also smiled with relief. It seemed like she was in a pretty good mood. Suddenly Hampton's stuttering voice interrupted his thoughts. Young master. Some men immediately turned around. Oh, what's wrong? Hampton walked up to him confused. Ah, that, we have to walk home. At this moment, some men woke up from his previous emotions and remembered that he would have to walk through this dangerous forest to get home if it wasn't for Evelia. However, some men still calmly told Hampton, we will be in the mountains for a few days, which made Hampton scared and looked around, huh? What about here? Some men nodded calmly. At least you still have a few pieces of dry food left, right? Hampton awkwardly replied, yes, that's right. But some men immediately saw what the boy was thinking. You want to know why we don't go back right away? Hampton confusedly denied because he knew that servants don't necessarily know the reason for their master's work. Ah, no, no. Some men smiled comfortably and explained to Hampton, because I let Rudia go with my second sister. Hampton tilted his head and looked at him bewilderedly. What do you mean? Some men replied with a sly smile. She will do what I say, and Harrow will find out as soon as Rudia leaves. Hampton's scared face immediately lit up. Ah, you want to go back with Hera? Cheerfully replied, yes. As long as we wait here, she will come. Some men smiled happily and looked into the distance. This place is no longer lonely, so we will be safe for the time being. Hampton suddenly asked some men in a thoughtful voice, Young master, could it be that the reason you came here was to save everyone living in the area outside the protection zone? Some men looked at the boy in bewilderment, the area outside the protected area. Hampton's eyes were sad. Those were the people in the unprotected area. Most humans live in these unprotected areas. And as a matter of fact, they are completely helpless when monsters attack. Hampton choked up, recalling painful memories when the boy was still outside the protective zone. My parents also passed away in an area outside the protected area. Suddenly Hampton's voice choked as if to suppress himself from crying. Finally, the tears flowed. Even though he was crying, the boy smiled happily. I think you also know that the goblins here like to hunt humans. That's why you killed the leader of them. I am very proud to be your shadow, young master. Some men thought to himself, he's over-interpreting everything, but never mind, just go along with it. Some men then smiled fakely. Um, you guessed it right. Hampton immediately shouted excitedly, you're amazing. Suddenly some men's intuition told me that something was still bothering me. Wait, if I were you, am I satisfied with what I just did? Although from her tone, it seems like she's quite satisfied. For a moment, some men's eyes flashed with surprise. The character Evilia that she had created would definitely be. Some men immediately activated his holy eyes and looked up at the sky with a dazed look. There was still one more reality test left. After that, he regained his composure and told Hampton, I will count from one to three, run right into the cave without looking up, okay? Hampton, both innocent and curious, immediately raised his head, looked, looked up. The boy's eyes immediately widened in fear and shock. In front of their eyes, a white tiger as big as the entire Starlight Library was standing there. 
looking at the two small creatures below with eager eyes like a cat looking at a mouse. When the white tiger let out a roar that shook heaven and earth, the holy eye displayed information about it, the ferocious white tiger of the wilderness. While Hampton was shaking like a leaf, some men started counting, one, second, along with the count of some men. White Tiger gradually moved closer to them with a fierce look on his face. Some men shouted, Dad, but he himself still stood still without running. Only Hampton followed the command and ran straight towards the cave. After a few seconds, the boy was startled to realize that some men was standing still. Ah, oh, why doesn't he come with him? Hampton frowned in confusion and worriedly looked at some men who was still standing there leisurely. Was he planning on being a bait? Hampton's footsteps suddenly stopped. The boy hesitated about what to do but quickly thought clearly, no, I just need to trust and do what he says. Some men saw that Hampton had run a distance before opening his mouth towards White Tiger, hey. Some men leisurely told White Tiger in a challenging voice, don't pay attention to him anymore, pay attention to me. While White Tiger glared at some men, he was immersed in his own thoughts, maybe she was a little disappointed because I solved the test so easily. After all, what she wants to see is her limit. Some men calmly stood looking at the white tiger even though it was roaring in his face. Right after that, some men smiled confidently, activated his beginner combat magic skills, and rushed towards white tiger. If it were a year ago, this would definitely have been impossible. While white tiger opened his mouth wide and pounced on some men, he still leisurely started using the wind attribute optimization skill. Some men gathered wind and mana into his fist with dazzling confidence, catching a real white tiger. Very quickly, the wind blew through some men's body, creating an aerodynamic layer to support him. The wind had enough force. My test, I will pass everything. With the accumulation of wind around him, some men laughed with delight and provoked white tiger. Are you confident in your speed then? Try to catch up with me right after that. He jumped off the ground and quickly jumped onto the tree trunks like a squirrel jumping branches. White Tiger followed closely behind some men and opened its mouth to grab him. Its speed was so fast that just one jump into the air was enough for it to stretch its snout close to some men. White Tiger swung down powerfully. It grabbed the entire space that some men was hovering in just now. Turns out some men was moving next to the White Tiger right before it grabbed him. I'm sorry, but enough playing around. Some men immediately poured mana into his fist and activated the high-level weight usage skill. He threw a mana punch at White Tiger's side, causing a loud explosion with smoke and dust covering White Tiger's entire body. Some men smirked arrogantly and sarcastically mocked White Tiger. What do you think? It's very spicy, isn't it? The White Tiger roared in pain with a mouthful of blood shooting out of its mouth, but it did not let it go so easily. In the blinding smoke, White Tiger's front legs suddenly swung towards some men, leaving him unable to react. Some men immediately used defensive beginner combat magic skills, but he still felt bad. Ah, he'll get hit. As soon as White Tiger's chubby mangosteen feet touched some men's body, he flew a hundred meters away. Luckily, the thousand-year dragon armor blocked quite a bit of damage from that attack, but because of that, the Holy Eye announced. Thousand-year dragon armor's durability is still 62 out of 100. Some men painfully got up from the pile of rocks. I was able to defend myself in time, but I still broke my left arm and ribs, huh? Some men touched his chest with a sigh of relief. If it weren't for the thousand-year dragon armor, I would have died. At this time, some men's body automatically uses the self-healing skill. Some men immediately ran into the cave. I was faster. But the tiger was stronger in both strength and defense. I should run to the cave where Hampton is and make a plan again. Hampton saw that some men was seriously injured and quickly treated him while crying bitterly. I'm sorry, young master. Please kill me, some men frowned. Why do I have to kill you? While Hampton was still crying, some men was engrossed in thinking. Self-healing takes a lot of mana. I should save mana for important times. Hampton was still sobbing and told some men, you won't get hurt if I act as bait. Some men smacked his lips and replied, Well, what you said is not wrong. Hampton firmly declared with tears in his eyes, with a shadow, to die for the master is a glorious death. Hampton is truly a shadow that has been trained intensively since childhood. Hearing that, some men immediately turned away angrily. Shut up, that action made Hampton even more confused. Young master, 
Some men snorted coldly in frustration. How could he know that when he was dead? Hampton was still about to try to explain the honorable sacrifice of a shadow, but some men dismissed it immediately. What would I do if my shadow died? Some men's words made Hampton feel emotional. Some men looked thoughtfully outside the cave, thinking about how to deal with White Tiger and told Hampton, I won't let you die. In a moment, the owner's cool image was deeply engraved in Hampton's mind. I respected the young master more than I thought. Before the boy's eyes, some men appeared more like a respected god than a normal master, even though the boy was trained to be loyal to his master. Emotions such as respect were something he baby feels it himself. At this time, the white tiger outside suddenly roared a threat, causing Hampton to tremble like a leaf. Meanwhile, some men's eyes looking outside suddenly became sharp. White Tiger kept growling and wandering around outside the cave without rushing in. Some men began to feel something strange. Can't the tiger get close to the cave? Understanding something, some men smiled triumphantly. I thought there was something strange when I first came here. Hampton asked him in bewilderment, isn't that strange? Some men nodded and explained to the boy where goblins live in large numbers. So there were only a few traces of goblins outside the cave. At that moment, some men deduced that there must be some reason. However, everything went smoothly, so he couldn't know what the problem was. Until now, he finally has a clue. Some men can only think of one possible case. The goblins are locked up here. Therefore, the poison keeps piling up inside this place, and the white tiger can't enter the cave because of the poison. Even though we're fine with the poison, some men smiled complacently, looking at the toxic fumes accumulated by the poison demon's defecation. Hampton then realized and cried out in disgust when he saw a pile of poison demon feces. Oh no, there is one here too. Thinking about the fact that the love gang has been trapped in here, Hampton curiously asked some men, the young master, if that's the reason. Some men nodded in response. Of course, Anvilia has trapped the sprites here. She did it not just to wait for me to come to this cave and rush in. The actual reason is much more important. After a moment of thought, Hampton exclaimed with interest, So you did it to protect this place for the white tiger. Some men nodded again with a satisfied expression. Hampton breathed a sigh of relief. So, we'll stay here until Hira arrives. However, some men coldly replied, No, Hampton. Startled, Hampton looked at some men with concern. No, that's not it. Some men explained, It's the safest way, but not the best. We'll kill the tiger before Hera arrives. This made Hampton tremble with fear. The, the, the white tiger. Can you paralyze it? Hampton replied hesitantly. I, I can, but I can't paralyze such a big tiger. Some men calmly responded. We don't need to paralyze the tiger. Hampton curiously asked. Then, then how much is enough? Some men grinned mischievously. Just enough to make things easier. He silently encouraged himself. If I pass this test... Evelia will reward me according to its difficulty. Soon after, Hampton successfully crafted a paralyzing poison solution. Although the quantity was limited, its potency had been significantly enhanced due to Hampton's upgraded abilities. Some men ordered Hampton to apply it to the corpse of the sprite. Hampton, horrified, exclaimed, the, the sprite's corpse. Some men nodded calmly, dismembering it and applying the poison. Hampton, never having done such gruesome tasks, responded with a trembling voice, Dis, dismember it. Finally, Hampton summoned the courage to dismember the sprite's corpse and apply the poison. They tied the pieces of the sprite's corpse together with a rope, and some men began to throw it. With a simple motion, the rope-bound pieces of the sprite's corpse were thrown outside the cave and fell at the feet of the white tiger. Hearing the growl of satisfaction from the white tiger upon receiving the bait, some men smiled with satisfaction. Meanwhile, Hampton was still in shock after dismembering the sprite's corpse with his own hands. After the white tiger enjoyed a few pieces of meat, it stopped growling, no longer hungry. The sun was now nearing its zenith, casting bright, scorching rays into the forest. Inside the cave, some men and Hampton were patiently waiting for something, looking more bored and lifeless than before. Some men tapped his fingers on the ground rhythmically and counted silently in his head. Fifty-eight. 59, 60. He was counting the time since he threw the bait to the white tiger, while Hampton, anxious and restless, couldn't help but worry as he saw his master calmly tapping the ground. 
After estimating that it had been half an hour, some men stood up and stretched, preparing for a counterattack with the White Tiger. He glanced outside the cave toward the sun. All right, this is the hottest time of the day. Sung Min calculated based on the heat and the paralyzing poison the weak of the White Tiger. As expected, outside the cave, at this moment, the White Tiger was lying exhausted, panting heavily from the heat. Sung Min didn't need to step outside to know that the White Tiger was tired. It lay sprawled out like a cat, breathing heavily with each labored breath. Sung Min began to wrap bandages around his hand, preparing for the fight with the White Tiger. It was impossible for an 11-year-old mage to hunt and kill a white tiger in this world, or in fact, for anyone in this world, not just mages. Some men clenched his fist with confidence and determination. I'm sure Evilia knows that, he thought. That's why this test is impossible. Some men reasoned. It means she wants to see how far I can go. That's why I have to show her my progress over the past year. In some men's eyes gleamed a bright spark of willpower and confidence. Some men thought to himself, two years have passed since I took over Larson's body. According to the original story, Larson only has seven more years to live. It also means that my death has been foretold. Some men thought while walking confidently out of the cave, I have to make a change in this world at any cost. As soon as some men walked out of the cave with shining confidence, White Tiger immediately stood up and glanced at him. Sung Min silently encouraged himself to become stronger than Evelia, than Decatra, and more than the main character Cassin. Sung Min stands tall facing White Tiger, I will make those things come true in this life. As soon as White Tiger saw his happiness, he enthusiastically opened his mouth and let out a menacing roar. Sung Min also did not hesitate to look at White Tiger with challenging eyes. So now, let's start round two. At this moment, the system displayed a notification again. Character Larson Maiden responded with strong determination. Lightning tactics have been unlocked. Some men opened his eyes in surprise. Lightning strategy. Immediately the lightning strategy skill was activated. Immediately, some men was able to feel what the power of this skill was. Some men's mana circle whirled violently, mana spreading throughout his entire body. A huge stream of energy was released in the blink of an eye leaving even the young man in shock. Inside the cave, Hampton observed everything and gasped speechlessly. The young master's mana was skyrocketing. The magic circles in some men's heart suddenly increased to three, then four, but he didn't feel any pain. There is just a feeling of difficulty controlling this power. The system informs some men, you can maintain a lightning strategy for three seconds with the amount of mana you have, automatically activating mobile delay. Sung Min quickly understood that lightning strategy was the skill of using all of his mana in one moment, is the hidden law of soul fighting that Magnar taught me. Before, Magnar once told Sung Min, strength, breaking, cutting, destroying. Strength is the strength of body and soul. To break is the breaking of body and soul. To cut is to create a straight line on a flat surface. Destruction is the end of a straight line. This is the hidden law of the fighting soul. When I first heard these things, some men felt confused and bored, and even yawned because she thought those were empty words. Some men complained to Magner. I don't understand what you're saying. In fact, he was complaining because the holy eye doesn't work when it needs to be explained. Magner smacked his lips and replied. In other words, it depends on the will. Some men continued to ask indifferently. Willpower, is that important? Magner nodded. The four hidden laws all reflect willpower. Okay, I will show you. Magner sighed and grumbled, I thought you were very smart. Some men ignored Magner's demonic insult and smiled flatteringly, good idea, so how do you plan to perform? Magner raised his iron fist and declared, if I punch down, this land will split into two and be destroyed. Some men laughed sarcastically at Magner, Master, what nonsense are you talking about? This is the land of the Sade family, you can't do that. However, Magner still activated his fighting spirit and combined with his fighting spirit, causing his fist to emit tremendous energy. Looking at Magner's steadfast eyes, some men finally knew he wasn't joking. He quickly dissuaded Magner. Wait, wait. Some men jumped up frantically with loud screams. Stop. Wait, he was extremely panicked. He wasn't joking. Sade family will disappear. Because of his haste to stand up, some men caused the bucket of water on his head to lose balance and fall down on his face. Seeing that, Magner happily retracted his fist, 
do you understand? At that time, Sung Min still didn't understand, but now he understands. This is the power the fighting soul can have when reflecting the will. Sung Min looked at the countdown of time to use lightning tactics and thought to herself, there's no time left. I need to cover my will in mana and explode it with lightning tactics. Sung Min declared in a harsh voice to White Tiger, I will kill you, no matter what. His whole body exploded with power and his mana burst turned red like fire. I will become even stronger. Fist strength, muscular endurance. Endurance, in one moment, all of this developed beyond compare. Even some men just sat down to gain momentum to attack, creating a large hole with countless cracks on the ground. Right then, some men without hesitation jumped towards White Tiger, his new skill, lightning strategy. Only three seconds left. I don't have time to think anymore. However, when Sung Min flew high, he was shocked to discover that his body could not control the sudden increase in strength and began to show signs of staggering and losing balance. Sung Min was forced to stop attacking and slipped under the tiger's feet, rushed behind it and landed. Wait! I can't keep my balance because my physical ability has increased too much. There's only two seconds left for quick tactics. Even though he was in a difficult situation, Sung Min quickly came up with a solution. So, using optimization of wind attributes and high-level weight skills. With the support of other skills, Sung Min's steps become lighter but easier to control the direction of movement. He kicked the ground and jumped high again. The situation is very urgent. There is only one second left for the lightning tactic to reach its full potential. Sung Min rushed straight towards White Tiger as if he had a rocket attached to his leg. His eyes glowed with will and strength mixed together. A fierce roaring sound echoed throughout the forest. Ready to die, Sung Min rushed forward with a thunderous fist that cut through White Tiger's body. This is the way to use the soul to fight. White Tiger also turned around to attack Sung Min at this time and opened his mouth to roar. Sung Min's mind kept repeating a single thought, I have to kill the White Tiger, and his fists shone brightly as if carrying the power of the sun. When the mana from Sung Min's punch collided with White Tiger, an energy explosion hurt instantly. The White Tiger roared in pain, causing shockwaves throughout the area. Hampton nervously watched the war situation from the cave and kept muttering worriedly, Young Master. At this time, the energy explosion had disappeared, leaving only its remnants as a thick black smoke and flashing electric sparks. Sung Min cut through White Tiger's body with his fist at this time. The system informed some men, you have used up all your mana, end the lightning strategy, deactivate the holy eye, along with white tiger's mixed flesh and blood flying everywhere in the air, happily smiling with satisfaction and panting tiredly, sister, thank you for the gift. Some men fell down next to white tiger's body, which had been split in half, revealing gruesome jagged broken ribs. Hampton quickly ran out looking worried, yo master, are you okay? The Holy Grail located in my heart also became exhausted and emaciated after pouring out all the mana it stored. Hey, my body. It feels strange. I feel like I'm running out of mana. I was fine just now. Some men heard the chalice's limit but was helpless. He lay on the ground with dull eyes. I can't move my body. I don't even have the strength to open my mouth anymore. This skill has such great consequences. It will take some time to master it. When some men in Hampton thought everything was over and could lie down to rest here and wait for Hera to arrive, suddenly a tiger's growl echoed towards them. Hampton shouted in panic, What, what, is there still another white tiger? Some men was also shocked and tried to crane his neck to look forward. Is there one more child? However, some men did not panic, but his eyes became strangely calm when he saw another tiger emerging from the trees. Ah, just as I thought. It turned out that Hera had brought another white tiger that was still alive all the way to this place. She calmly dropped the white tiger in front of the two of them, happily breathing a sigh of relief in her heart. There you are, Hera. Hera looked up at the dying white tiger. She took out two daggers and leaned close to its ear and said with a cold and cruel voice, I will let you rest in peace now. As soon as he finished speaking, Hera brandished his knife and performed a few quick cuts. White Tiger was completely unable to resist the approaching death. Hira took less than three seconds to complete the task of sending White Tiger back to the Golden Stream. 
She was so fast that White Tiger even just opened his mouth to scream in pain before he lost his breath. Hera coldly walked away while White Tiger's blood was flying into the sky and falling like rain, dyeing her whole body red. Hera walked up to some men in Hampton. I'm glad that both of you are okay. Some men didn't have the strength to open his mouth right now. As for Hampton, witnessing the entire horrifying scene just now, his face turned black with fear. She was even scarier than the White Tiger. Some men's eyelids became heavy and he gradually drifted off in thought. I understand what happened. Ah, no. With his consciousness, Hampton saw this and shouted loudly in panic. Young master. Ah, Hara. Quickly carry the young master home. After that, some men slept for several days straight due to exhaustion. In the dream that lasted for several days, he dreamed about himself. Some men, when he was in Korea, some men couldn't tell if it was a dream or real because the feeling was so real. At that time, he was an ordinary salaryman trying to pay his debts every day. At the same time, he is also the author of a three-cent novel. He knows it's boring and just a cheap novel to many people, but he still reads it every night as a way to relieve stress. While some men was living that normal dream life, he almost forgot that reality itself was possessing Larson's body in the novel. Three days later, the dream of life in Korea ended. Sung Min suddenly sat up with gasps as if he had just had a nightmare, but he was no longer as shocked as he was when he just crossed over two years ago. Sung Min looked around and quickly realized that everything that had just happened was just a dream. He is still in the body of Larson, the young master of a wealthy family. Hera appeared as soon as he heard the noise. Young master, you are awake. Sung Min felt more relaxed and asked Hara, how long have I been sleeping? Hira immediately replied, about three days. Song Min nodded and mumbled, three days, that's quite a long time. Suddenly Song Min's eyes collided with a strange object stored in a laboratory jar. It looked like a heart, which frightened him. Oh, what, what is that? Hera replied calmly, that's a piece of the heart of the white tiger you killed. That white tiger was cut into pieces. Song Min shook her head with a confused expression. No, I know what it is, but why is it here? Hera continued to explain. White Tiger's heart is very good at restoring mana. I thought it would help you. Some men leaned closer to look at the piece of White Tiger's heart with a creepy feeling, but he still tried to stay calm and said, Thank you, Hira. It seems my sister already knew you were coming. Some men was a bit disgusted, so he put the White Tiger heart aside. He continued to say, Hira. That's why she prepared two White Tigers probably to buy time for me to fight one. After a moment of thinking, Sung Min slowly opened his mouth in a skeptical voice, however. There were a few things that bothered me. Hira looked up at him with a bit of curiosity. What is that? Sung Min started to speak out his reasoning. With your skills, you should have known that there were two white tigers as soon as you entered this forest. Even so, you still walk slowly and leisurely carrying a still living white tiger in your hand, I don't think it's because that white tiger is too strong, right? Some men narrowed her eyes and looked at Hero with curiosity. Hira calmly replied, Whether I carry that tiger or not, it won't affect my speed, some men thought. Well, I don't doubt it, you're said to be the strongest assassin in the world, according to what I wrote. Some men did not hesitate to directly state her judgment to Hira. I'm sure my sister, Evilia asked you to do that, right? Hera couldn't help but be surprised by that question. Her silence also confirmed that some men's guesses were correct. However, some men did not raise his voice to blame Hara. He said in a sympathetic voice, I guess with your personality. You definitely don't agree. She wants to test me, but you prioritize protecting me. My sister must have used restriction magic so that you couldn't move quickly. Some men said such understanding words, making Hera a bit stunned and not knowing what to say. After a moment of silence, she finally bowed her head and admitted, you were 100% right. Hara secretly understood in her heart, the young master is not talking to me. Hara senses the presence of another person nearby who is hearing these things, which is actually Lady Avelia. Some men stood up to warm up his muscles after three days in bed. Well, since I finished the test, now we should go back to practicing. Hara was a little worried about some men's health and asked, are you feeling okay? Some men said to Hera, but his voice echoed out the window, Don't worry, I need to become stronger, otherwise we are nothing. Sure enough, just as the two of them predicted, 
Evilia was outside the window of some men's room and clearly heard all of her brother's inferences. Evelia didn't come to talk to some men directly, but she smiled with satisfaction and a warm light appeared in her bright yellow eyes. The next second, Evelia opened a space portal in the sky and disappeared in the blink of an eye. Evelia returned to the main mansion and met Deketra. He asked his daughter, is he doing well? Evelia replied with a gentle voice, yes, currently, she has been able to maintain stability in the second circle. Even when Evelia cleverly talked her down, Deketra still proved herself to be a difficult person. A year ago it had something to brag about, but its current condition is worse than last year. Evelia did not hesitate to propose to Deketra. Father, I intend to take her under my wing. Deketra pondered for a moment and then coldly replied, There are some things I want to ask you. Evelia, Evelia knows it won't be easy for father to agree. She's mentally prepared, just ask. Decatro looked at Evelia, both curiously and suspiciously. What did the youngest child do to make you love her so much? Evelia frankly expressed, I like her very much. She, as a magician, is lacking something. But he's smarter than any kid I've ever seen, and he's not too arrogant or selfish. And I like that even more. A warm smile appeared on Evelia's lips when talking about some men. She said to Decatro in a rare respectful but deep voice, if you allow it. I want her to be mine. Evelia's comment left Decatro with no rebuttal. He himself felt the same way. However, Decatro wanted to maintain the image of a cold authoritarian person. So he just waved his shirt indifferently and told Evelia that I decide for myself. Evelia smiled gently and briefly showed a happy expression, thanking her father. After that day, time passed very quickly. And so winter passed, spring came, Finally, the first day of the year 223, according to the Hyon calendar, three more years have passed by. In other words, in his body Larson has now reached the age of 14, an important threshold in life, on this important day. Hera came to the owner with a complicated mood. Some men was lying down in the wind and thinking about his future plans after the age of 14. As soon as he saw Hara, he sat up. What's wrong, Hira? Hara gave some men a letter stamped by the Maiton family. There was a letter sent from the owner. Some men didn't even need to open it to guess part of the letter's content. It was probably about him needing to go on a pilgrimage. In his heart, he happily whispered, Finally this day has come. But he was no longer as sad as before when he mentioned this matter. He stood up and called Hera closer. She is still respectful as always. Yes, young master. Some men asked Hera, can you cut my hair for me like before? Hearing that request, Hera knew that some men was about to have an important plan. While cutting some men's hair, Hera asked him, have you read the letter? Some men happily replied, then, I will return to the main house. Some men told Hera, members of the Maiden clan between the ages of 14 and 16 must participate in a pilgrimage. Hera nodded with a bit of curiosity. I see, so you are also participating in the pilgrimage. Some mid excitedly describes the trip with Hera. We will explore all over the world, collect antiques, and recruit people outside the clan. Hera seemed interested and asked more, your own people. Some men smiled gently and replied, yes, just like you, Hera. Hera was a little touched when she saw some men taking her seriously like that. Then it was some men's turn to ask her, what will you do first when you return to the main house? Hera thought for a moment and then said, I will have to clean my room because I haven't been there for a long time. Some men smiled and told her, you are not a servant. Just let someone else do it for you. Although I like this personality of yours. Hera did not respond to some men's request even though she was grateful in her heart. Very soon after, Hera brushed off the curls of hair still stuck on some men's shirt and asked him, how do you feel, young master? Some men looked in the mirror, admiring his neat hair with a satisfied smile. I really liked it. He hadn't cut his hair in three years because he felt it was unnecessary. Moreover, the process of practicing every day also makes him forget about grooming. Some men smiled gently and turned back to say to Hira, still great as always. Thank you, Hira, she calmly nodded, no problem. She always kept her cold and emotionless face like that even when she was praised by some men. After thinking for a while, Hera asked some men the same question as before. What are you planning to do first when you get back there, young master? Some men smiled full of confidence and enthusiasm. 
he did not hesitate to share with Hera his thoughts. We've been thinking about that for a while. I decided, I will do it. Sung Min grinned and narrowed his eyes when thinking about his bold plan, a plan that will startle others and make some jealous.